Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be taking a look at this review copy I was sent of Kidnap the Arch Priest, which is a systemless, settingless heist module by Skirples. Uh, Skirples is the author of the Coins and Scrolls blog, which is one of the best old school blogs out there as far as I'm concerned. I definitely go check that out. So this module sets out to solve a problem. And that problem is how do you run heists in role playing games? Not even necessarily in old school games, but just games in general. Uh, heists often give a lot of problems to DMs, mostly because they take a lot of planning um, and it's hard to get the players to get invested in that planning and to make that planning meaningful and interesting and have it pay off appropriately after the heist is over. So this looks at ways to solve that problem and gives a lot of really excellent tools uh, to handle that. Here's our back cover. This is a print-on-demand version from DriveThruRPG. As usual, I will put a link down in the comments below or in the description below where you can check that out for yourself. So what we get here. So it's broken down into a number of steps. We have the prologue, how to create the plan, the execution of the plan, and the escape with an epilogue for how to design your own heists. So basically, who is this for? This is for experienced GMs who want to try heists. James, you want to learn more about unconventional adventure design? Because one thing that Skirples does a lot is he has these intro adventures, right? This is one of them. Another one is the Tomb of the Serpent Kings, which is an intro dungeon. And what he does really well in these adventures is he uses them as a teaching tool, uh, not only to teach game masters how to design modules like this, but also teaching tools for the players. If you throw players into these types of adventures, they learn about the old school style of play just through um, actually playing it. In the same way that you might play Mario, and Mario doesn't have a tutorial, but you learn through playing. So it goes into a little bit about um, what systems you might want to use for it. it. This is a very system neutral, though it's assumed for old school games. Um, some possible adjustments. This is about kidnapping an archpriest, which is essentially a fantasy version of the Pope. But you can set it, of course, in an actual historical era or in other eras if you want to, with a little bit of reskinning. General prologue was the backstory of this heist. Why does the archpriest uh, need to be captured? Who are his political enemies that set you up to do this? Including some rundowns of the people who are interested in the kidnapping. Uh, some general information about the city of Thule, uh, the problems. Um, things that everyone generally knows, ways that you can go about buying things. In other words, a lot of really simple tools that make uh, running the module easier and allow for planning to be easier. A really big factor in Skirple's design here is time. So it's all about constraining the player's resources. Time is a really big one. Um, when the adventure is set up, it's speculated that you're going to have a lot of time to plan this heist. But it takes a long time to get to this city where the heist is going to take place. And so as a result, you end up with only like two and a half days to pull off this heist. So time is very constrained. And as a result, um, the more investigation and planning that you do, the more time is used up. So that's a resource that players have to manage. That's a great way to keep the tension up, I think. We have some a couple locations like the Super Monk Inn, which can be their base of operations with some NPCs there. And I really like the way that he lays out these NPCs. Each one has an appearance. Um, a voice, what they want, what their morality is, which is really interesting because it's involved, you know, with kidnapping an archpriest. So you need to know to what extent are they going to help or hinder this uh, band of rogues, which is you and your players, um, and what their intelligence is and, you know, their stats, which you're going to have to slot in based on whatever system that you're using. And all of these are very punchy and very clear and paint a very vivid picture of these NPCs in very few words, which is really important for a DM that has a lot of NPCs to manage is going to have to paint a, a quick picture of them as PCs interact with them. It makes things very easy. Some general all-purpose NPCs you can have here. And a rumor table that's really excellent. It's a D50 table of different um, NPCs you can run into on the streets and what they know. Uh, not all of the information will be accurate, of course, but it's a great way for players to start getting a sense of the city and what's going on. Uh, a variety of other locations in Thule, which is the city, uh, the docks, the cathedral, uh, general rundowns. We have some random tables for improvising stuff on the fly. Uh, in general, there is just a lot of really practical tools 
in this, which I was really happy to see. There has been a lot of care taken for DMs who are going to run a very complex type of adventure, right? Heists are not easy to run. So all of the tools that have been designed here to make that easier are really cool. And this is the biggest one that I am super stoked about. So what this is, is this has all of the NPCs up on the top here. Um, we have major events, but we also have John, Alice, and Tormund. We have the, the three cardinals over here, the archpriest over here, and uh, some of the priests and servants over here. These are the main NPCs that are that you're going to encounter. And this is a schedule for them, right? Broken down by hour over the you know two and a half days that this adventure takes place over. So at every single hour, you're going to know exactly where all of these NPCs are. It's super easy to track them. That is really cool. A player can actually decide to tail a particular NPC and you have a schedule of what they are doing at every hour. I would probably do something like have maybe a, a chip system similar to Hot Springs Island where every hour you just like add another chip or maybe just, you know, use hash marks on a piece of paper, but make it very obvious what time of day it is. Use the bells of the city, for example, so that whenever they take an action, you can say, okay, that uses up another hour and then you can you know, push the timeline forward and know where everyone is. Uh, if you run into people, then you can have a random table for why they're meeting. Uh, things that are going on in the castle. If you study the exterior of the castle where the archpriest is hiding, then here's a bunch of pieces of information that you can pull out. Like when food is delivered or the gate guards know most of the servants by name or like when the, the shifts of the guard change. We have some NPCs, including cardinals and three priests and a variety of servants living in the castle along with some gate guards and the archpriest himself there's also a um, a whole legion of something like the praetorian guard the black endo guard that are these incorruptible terrifying soldiers that are marching around basically they're roadblocks you have to find a way to circumvent and we have this really great summary here i love it when books do both things where they have like longer versions. They have like these um, short descriptions of what the players, the NPCs are like. They have like these paragraphs that go into more depth about their background, but then they also do the summary for you. Like for a lot of these adventures, it's very tempting for me to just, you know, sigh and then, okay, I got to summarize all of this. I got to fit it on one sheet so I can actually run this. But this book does that for you. It's thinking ahead. And we have a general ideas about the, the execution of the heist, right? So players, of course, are going to come up with things that you would not expect. They are much more devious than most DMs. But here's like a whole bunch of ways that things could play out, right? So here's some ways that you could possibly get in, some ways you can grab the Archpriest, and some ways that you can exit. And different NPCs that you meet might have ideas about these so that you can drop hints to your players if they're really stuck. But I think that most players wouldn't have too much of a problem coming up with a way in, given the way that all of the NPCs in this adventure are heavily interconnected. They all you know, like each other or hate each other or have past relationships with one another that would allow for this you know, interconnected network to be pulled and tugged by the NPCs until you find a connection to get in. Just reading through the module, all sorts of ideas were coming to me about ways that I might exploit some of the connections in here. Some great treasures of the Archpriest. Now, some of these um, tables I've noticed are a little bit blurry. They look a little bit like it was an image that was blown up a little bit, um, but it's a, a minor quibble. We have a, a drawing of the castle exterior from the four different sides. I think the, the main thing I would have liked to uh, see this improved upon would be to see things isometrically, um, actually see things in 3D. That would have been really helpful. It's actually a little hard to picture exactly what things look like um, from these pictures, but I understand that doing things isometrically is more of a pain, but it would have helped with visualization. And we have a general layout of what's inside the castle. These rooms are have a very sparse, bare bones description, and that's intentional because by and large, you're not gonna be going room to room very carefully looting everything. Um, you're usually going to be sneaking and keeping a low profile, or you're going to be running at high speed as you're being chased. So things are kept fairly minimal, and the, the game master is gonna put most of their emphasis on tracking where the NPCs are and what's going on around them, I think. So there is some treasure that can be looted if players want to take the time to do that. There are three levels here, all the way going up to the highest level. And I really like the layout here. Whenever you have these descriptions of the rooms, you always have a reproduction of that part of the map. 
so you can easily see what the rooms refer back to. There's no page flipping necessary here in order to see um, the room references. You have the Archpriest's uh, floor on the very highest level, full of the most treasure, of course, and the goal of the adventure. There are some windows here, so of course some players may try and climb the outside of the castle and get in that way. And we have some rules for escaping. You might want to use your own chase rules if there is already chase rules in the system of your choice. And there's also rules here for what happens when the alarm is raised, right? The timeline of what's going to happen. As they're escaping, there's another large uh, encounter table for things that happen. Daytime encounters at the river, nighttime encounters at the river, and then the same thing for the street. So they're going to have a lot of variety to throw at the players on the fly. You're not going to have to improv things too much because a lot of that work has been done for you. And we have a finale for what happens after you take the Archpriest back to uh, back to the his captors, to the people who hired you, if you pull that off. Because it's quite possible that your plan will fail, and you'll be run out of the city or killed. So there's a lot of tension in the sense that there's a lot of buildup, and either the player's plan will work or it won't. And if it won't, then it could be quite disappointing that all of that work was for nothing. But of course, if they do pull it off, they're going to feel like geniuses. So that's the risk and reward that's simply at play here. There's some general information about designing your own heists. You've got your four dials, time, money, information, and opposition that you can turn up or down depending on the amount of tension that you want when designing your own heists. Uh, your general three phases, the sorts of things the GM is going to have to prepare, mapping tips, um, risks and failures, like I mentioned, and uh, threats and plans. And that's basically it. We have a little timetable here at the back that you can fill in with information about what the PCs are doing, or I guess adding other information to your own timetable. I can think of a lot of ways you could use this, along with some pages for campaign notes. So all in all, this module is really unique, and I think deals with and, to my mind, solves a really interesting problem in role-playing games, making heists actually usable and making them satisfying to plan and execute. Uh, there are other role-playing games out there, like Blades in the Dark, for example, that simply skip over the whole planning part of a heist. You simply jump right into it, and then you retcon your planning in later. Which works well, I think, for a story game, but for an OSR game where that uh, relies a lot more on player skill and player planning, you need something like this. And the tools in here are top-notch. This thing is going to go near the top of my list of adventures to run with players, because I really want to see how this works. Of course, you're going to need to have the right group of players. You have players that enjoy this sort of thing. But with that group, I think they would have a really great time. So that's it for my review for today. Uh, I'd like to thank some of my latest patrons, including uh, Noble Fiend, John Eternal, and Bored with Life Adventures. Um, I also want to point out that the Ennies are coming up very soon, and you can vote in the Ennies. There is a lot of really great OSR books nominated this year. I will put a link down in the description below. So go out there, vote for the stuff that you like, and let's make this a great year for the OSR. Next Wednesday, I'm going to be doing a review of this, which is Barrow Maze Complete, a massive mega dungeon by Greg Gillespie. So keep an eye out for that. I'm really excited to dig into this thing. It is huge and just a labyrinth thing, and it just it looks wonderful. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys later.